Hey guys, this is Monty. Um, it's been a, a very long time since I last released a tutorial, seeing as I <clears throat> graduated from uni and started working full-time as a, as a web developer, but I figured now would be a pretty good time to come back onto YouTube and cover a couple of the things that I've learned over the last year and almost two years now, probably. So uh, I'm trying to get back into it, and uh, let's have some fun along the way. I've noticed um, I've actually gotten a, a fair few subscribers. Uh, I've seen them coming through my through my emails, and I've been trying to help here and there with comments and problems people are having. But uh, now I've decided I'm going to dedicate some solid time to building up my channel, and I, I really appreciate all the subscriptions and. Uh, I guess, starting from this video, I'm going to try and release some more content for you guys. So anyway, on, on, to, on to the topic. Uh, in this short video kind of series, it'll probably only be one, two or three videos, I wanted to cover my workflow for creating WordPress themes. WordPress themes, sorry. There we go, the list back already it takes me way back home. All right, so... What I like to do when I create a WordPress theme is to start with a basically a Vagrant. If you guys have heard about Vagrant, it basically uh, I'll bring it up here for you. Vagrant. What it allows you to do is create development environments. Basically, so you can uh, get a get a Vagrant box, which is its own sort of little contained thing that you can download. And it'll have Apache on it, and it'll have you know all your all your PHP um, extensions. And if, if any of you guys have ever tried installing PHP extensions on on Windows or or just in general, you probably understand that that can be a, a real pain in the ass. And this makes life a lot easier when it comes to setting yourself up with just a nice base environment you can, environment you can develop on, and you can. You can basically start it up through the command line. You can suspend the process. You can just have them sitting there and, and boot them up whenever you need them. So they're, they're really handy for that. And uh, whenever I'm creating something new, uh, ideally, you know, something like a WordPress theme, for example, I like to work out of, out of Vagrant and, um, and just build my basis on that. In the future tutorials, uh, the next ones in the... In the uh, overall thing we're going to be doing here. I, I'll show you the starter theme that I like to use. Um, I like to use Roots. Uh, you can find it on roots.io and this is an amazing starter theme. Uh, it comes with Gulp and uh, oh, just a, a whole bunch of stuff that makes life amazing. And uh, we use Sage. I'll cover this more in a later tutorial but I just wanted to touch on it now. Basically, uh, yeah, it comes with stuff like a uh, Gulp, Bower, Bootstrap, um, a really nice workflow, um, theme wrappers. It, we'll go through it properly later, but this makes the life a lot easier when you're starting a new WordPress theme. And it comes with a, a, a bunch of really great conventions and things you can follow that will keep everything organized. And you'll be able to revisit the project in the future if you need to. And um, just be able to kind of pick up from where you left off a lot smoother than if you were mm, in like if you were doing it your own way unless you were very confident already and I suppose if, if you're already an expert at making WordPress themes uh, there's probably not a heap I can teach you here but we'll have some fun with it anyway so anyway on to the point Scotchbox Scotchbox is what I was talking about for Vagrant it's basically a box you can download for Vagrant and use to set up your development environment. And this is what I wanted to cover in, in the first tutorial. So basically, yeah, they, they do it as a, a Vagrant LAMP stack that just works. Now, LAMP is basically uh, Linux, so it runs off Linux, and you've got Apache, MySQL, and PHP already installed, ready to go. So if we just go down here, you can see some of the stuff it has. So it comes on Ubuntu. 14.04 uh, comes with PHP 5.6, which is, um, I believe, it's the latest version. Uh, we get, comes with Ruby if we want to do any of the Ruby stuff. We get Vim, Git, Curl, GD, and Image Magic Composer, 
Node, NPM, uh, mcrypt, all, all this stuff comes pre-installed. You don't need to bother installing or setting up any of it. Uh, it comes with MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQLite, which is really handy. We get Redis, um, and then our Node stuff will be making use of a lot of this stuff, like uh, Grunt and Bower. We'll be using Gulp instead of Grunt, but I'll cover that later. We get Bower for our front-end packages, Gulp for setting up our task runners, uh, Yeoman for scaffolding. We're probably not going to do a whole lot of Yeoman stuff in this particular workflow, but just know that if you ever wanted to do something else, it's there for you. Browser sync is great. That'll um, Whenever you make changes to your files, it'll refresh your browser for you. Just It's a small thing, but you learn to love it. Uh, comes pretty much ready for, for Laravel. It's great for Laravel. And uh, it's pretty much set up for WordPress as well. I think they cover that up here somewhere. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, we've got PHP errors already turned on. Laravel and WordPress ready. So we were dealing after that one at the moment. Um, yeah, so it's beautiful. A great, great little box to start with, and I fully recommend it. So we're going to go through setting it up. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to do to set up Scotchbox is download and install Vagrant. So if you go to the Vagrant site, you'll see here you can literally just download it. It's uh, I've already got it downloaded, but we'll click on it and you can download it for your operating system. They have Mac, Windows, Linux, etc. Click the one you want. It'll bring up the download. You download, install it, and then you'll have access to it in your command prompt. Um, and we'll go through that shortly. Uh, after that, you also need to download and install VirtualBox. Now, VirtualBox is basically a software for setting up virtual machines. So you could like uh, set up a virtual machine and install Windows on it, and you'd have your own little computer inside of your computer. Or you could set up a virtual machine and put Linux on it, for example. So that's kind of what it is. We don't need to worry about VirtualBox at all, because Vagrant handles all of it. Um, we just need to have it installed so that Vagrant can use it. So as for VirtualBox, it's pretty much the same as Vagrant. Um, if we go to Oracle VM VirtualBox, Sorry for my slow Australian internet. So there's a download button there. You can just download, install it. They're all very, they're both very straightforward to set up, and I'm not going to go into that. Just in order to um, keep this tutorial relatively short. Um, but once you've got both of these installed, um, all we basically need to do is clone the Git repo, and then uh, just run Vagrant up. And they have the, the the instructions here, so you can revisit this on the site and work it through if you forget anything. And they even have nice little videos showing you what to do. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to bring up our control panel. So once you have uh, Vagrant installed, you'll notice you can type in the command Vagrant. Oh, whoops, if I could spell it correctly. And if we give it a second, it'll give us all of the commands we can do. The only ones we really need to think about is stuff like Vagrant up which um, that basically boots up the machine, and so you can start working on it. Uh, another good one is Vagrant Suspend. So you can basically shut down the machine so it stops using resources and everything. So whenever you're not working on it, I like to Vagrant Suspend my box, and then when I want to come back to it, I just Vagrant up it again. Those are really the only two I ever use. Um, if I'm finished, uh, you can run Vagrant Destroy. And uh, that won't actually destroy your files or anything. They're all safe. They're on your computer. But it will, like, uh, it'll destroy the Vagrant box. It will, you know, uh, delete the database and just get rid of everything inside of that little machine. So uh, let's just bring that back up. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the GitHub repository. So we can basically just copy this command here which is git clone. Uh, I'm assuming you know how to use git at this point. Um, if you don't, you can install git. One moment here. Uh, yeah, you could probably just uh, install git from here, I believe. It's been a while since I've installed git. I always have it nowadays. So yeah, here we go. So you could probably just download this from 
yeah, here you go. You can just download it for Mac, and then you'll have access to Git in your terminal. Um, and I believe that it should be relatively the same for Windows. You'll just need to use Command Prompt, which, which um, has its has its little quirks, but I think you should be fine on that front. So if we go in here and we go into our site well, sites directory or wherever you want to put it, um, because we're not using this is something newbies might assume um, we don't need to put it into our normal sites folder like we may you may have like a, a WAMP folder or something like that or, or XAMP or, or or MAMP and they have their own uh, documents folder where you put all your websites you don't need to worry about that you can put this anywhere because we're running our server self-contained so um, I'm just gonna make a new directory and we'll call it um, a new tutorial one, because we're going to have a part two. And then we'll go into that folder and we will run our git clone. So we run that and that'll basically just clone down the box that we were talking about um, into our folder. So you can see here we now have my project, so we'll cd into my project. And we have three files and I'm going to open this up in our editor. This is basically our whole vagrant file so a vagrant folder so you'll see we have a git ignore that basically just means you know you can um this is just included so that uh, like our vagrant isn't included our ds store isn't included we don't need to worry about that at all we have a readme so you can sort of cover through some stuff um if you just quickly need to reference it again uh the two big ones we're looking at here is our vagrant file so this is sort of like our configuration for Vagrant itself. So we can name our box here, which is Scotchbox. We can set our IP that we want to be able to visit. So this is 192.168.33.10. We'll just change that last number to, we, you don't have to do this, but I like to just keep all of my sites on different numbers. Um, so we'll just say like uh, 44. And the host name, Scotchbox, we'll leave that as it is at the moment. And the synced folder, don't worry about touching that. That basically just syncs the files that you're going to be viewing in on the website to your public folder, which is right here. And your public folder is where we're going to be installing WordPress and whatever site we're working on. So you'll see here we have an index.php. This is just a HTML page that will be viewable inside our Scotchbox as the default, um, as the default page. So, we're pretty good, and all we need to do now is run Vagrant up. So, Vagrant up. This can sometimes take a little while. Um, usually, it's, it's fairly quick if you do it more than once. The first time you do it, if you don't have the Vagrant box installed, it will need to download a, a fair few things to, to get set up, so that may take a little while. But once you do it once, you won't need to do it ever again, unless the box updates. So we'll let that do its thing. Um, it's just yeah, importing the box because uh, we've already got it downloaded. It just needs to import. And I'll probably um, cut out this bit unless it starts speeding up. But uh, I don't believe it should take too long. Here we go, so it's just matching the MAC addresses, checking if it's up to date. So it says, okay, we have a new one available. I can up update it if I want, which I probably will shortly, but um, we're fine to run on this one for now. Um, and it's just setting up all the details, and in a couple of seconds, it will be ready to roll. Okay, there's a chance it might ask you if you're administrator password. If that's the case, just type it in. We'll give it a sec to mount up the shared folders, and we are good. Okay, so we're pretty much done with this now. Um, that's all it took. All you need to do is install Vagrant, install VirtualBox, um, and then clone this repo, which is available on GitHub, 
And you can find all these details on scotchbox.io, box.scotch.io. And um, you'll, you'll basically see there's a whole bunch of other stuff here, but yeah, all we need to do is run big run up, which we just did. And then we're good, we can access our project. And uh, it covers a couple of other things. You can see some basic commands here, like starting your server. You can pause it, which is what I like to do when I'm not working on it. You can delete it. And you can also SSH into your server. And that's for like, um, if you've done any server stuff before, like um, setting up your setting up some of your stuff if, if you're not on shared host if you're not on shared hosting and you have a little bit more access other than just FTP uh, SSH is your friend and uh, if you ever need to do that you can just run vagrant SSH and you'll get a, uh, a shell access straight into your server there's also database access which we'll be doing in the next tutorial it'll allow you to connect up the database and get everything working in your vagrant box uh, covers updating the box setting host names and that's pretty much it um, so what we're going to do is view our site. So if we go into our Vagrant file, you remember we set the IP to this. So if we grab this with the 44 on the end and just open it up in a tab, you'll see we have access to our site. And um, in the next tutorial, or the one after that, I'll probably cover up how to set up like a, a virtual host. So we'll be able to access our site through something like, you know, like a scotchy.dev or, or dot whatever. And um, once again, I can't spell. And then we'll be able to access it through that, which is a little easier to remember than putting in an IP address. But anyway, we're up and running with Scotchbox now. And you'll see here, it's like a welcome page. I like to keep this up. I usually rename it to something like uh, scotchinfo.php so that it's not the default page once I put in WordPress. And I can always revisit this. I can see, you know, what operating system we're running on, what PHP version we're running on. We can see everything that's installed. We can see all our database info, handy stuff. And we also got the docs up here. Pretty much everything we could need to, to deal with our Scotch box. And um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Uh, so I'm just gonna go in here and we'll say uh, Vagrant Suspend. And it's going to save the VM state, and now it's not using any more resources. We refresh the page, and you'll see our server is gone. And if we ever want to bring it back up again, we can just run Vagrant up. Any guys, any, anyway, guys, um, that is pretty much what I wanted to cover for the first one today. I just really wanted to get this one down because I run a lot of my projects off of Scotchbox, and um, it's been a blessing to use and often some of the biggest headaches you'll find in development is setting up stuff like PHP extensions, getting all of the development stuff installed. And it can be a real pain. This does it all with a couple of commands. All you need to do is clone the repo, run Vagrant up, and you have a brand new project ready to go. And you no longer need to, you know, sort your, your, all your websites by folders. You can just have a scotch box for each one. And you're pretty much laughing. Anyway, guys, uh, that is, yeah, that's it. Um, I would like to, once again, say thank you for subscribing to everybody who has. And uh, if you're watching this for the first time and you like my, my channel and you like the way that I don't practice my tutorials beforehand because ain't nobody got time for that, uh, then, hey, feel free to subscribe and um, I'll chuck out some more content for you. We'll do some fun stuff. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to start going into uh, roots.io which is really amazing. Um, it is excellent. I'll cover some of the some of the really cool stuff you can do when working on your theme and uh, just some of the tool implementation they've done to, just to make life easier. So that'll be fun. And I'll also yeah, cover some of the stuff that some of the beginners kind of get stuck on a little bit with Roots. Um, stuff with like the manifest.json and stuff, which can be a little bit confusing until you get your head around it, but we'll cover it in a way that'll make it much easier to understand. Um, so yeah, for the, for the third time, cheers guys, and, uh, I will catch you soon. Peace.